all right guys welcome back to the channel and today we're gonna be uh doing a walkthrough of problem j4 in the canadian competing competition or senior 2 for the 2022 version and this question is called good groups and let's read the description first so a class has been divided into groups of three and there's going to be constraints where some students must work together in the same group and some must be separated so the first line will contain an integer x where x is larger than zero or equal to zero and the next x lines will consist of two different names and these two students must be in the same group then there's going to be integer y same thing there's going to be two different names but they must not be in the same group and the number of total constraints are going to be x plus y and this will make more sense later if it doesn't make sense to you right now lastly there's going to be an integer g and it's going to be a bit different because g has to be at least one and the last g lines will each consist of three instead of two different names also separated by a single space and these three students have been placed in actual groups so they don't represent constraints they represent actual groups so uh forget this actually it doesn't really matter let's just look at sample inputs so uh for example let's look at this input uh so this guy inputs one for x meaning there'll be one group of constraint one constrained group where there's going to be two students and they have to be in the same group for the g group the actual group and <clears throat> we see that he inputs a load and chi and uh, for the y constraints, he just inputs zero because uh, there just isn't any. So there's only one total constraint. And that's uh, this one where Elodie and Chi have to be in the same group. And they are. So no constraints are violated because they are in the same group. So the output is zero. And the output is just the number of violated constraints. So let's look at this more complex input that I think will illustrate the problem a bit better. If you look at what he inputs for x, he inputs 3, and he inputs a and b, g and l, g and k. So a and b must be in the same group, g and l must be in the same group, and j and k must be in the same group. So j and k are, in fact, in the same group, so this is not violated. But g and l, they're in different groups, this is violated. And a and b are also uh, in different groups instead of the same group, so this is violated. So that's two constraints. Right, But then if you look at the ones where they must be separated, D and F are not separated, so this is violated. And the final constraint, which is uh, D and G must be separated, they are separated. So uh, this constraint is not violated. So that's two violations plus one. So there are three violations. And so the input is, sorry, the output is just three. So this problem is a bit difficult to face so i'm gonna jump straight to the solution i'm not gonna do a code along and i'll just explain line by line first of all uh there's the input specification right and there's the input x which is an integer because x is an integer and we're gonna do x times uh we're gonna input this x times where uh, we split the input a so if you do split, what happens is, for example, uh, the input is something like A, space B, space C. Uh, a will become an array where it's A, B, and C separated by the space. So this is what A becomes. And we just uh, append A to the, the same group. And we'll explain later why these three uh, arrays are important. These three lists are important. Okay, so you can kind of see what will happen if we compare with uh, sample input two, for example. So if I input three, uh, x will be three. So let's just try to put a comment there. And if we input a and b, g and l, g and k, I explained earlier what split does. So at first, same group is gonna be an empty array. Then we're gonna append uh, a and b, which will look like this. Uh, a, B, like that. And then we're going to append G and L, which looks exactly like this, except it's G and L. Sorry, oops. Uh, and then we're going to append J and K, which also looks like this, 
but it's JNK. So at the end of these first four lines of input, what we get is something like this. Uh, the same group array will look like this. Uh, it will look like an array like this, where it, it has three sublists. Sorry, I just keep confusing array and list. It's going to be a list with three sublists that looks like this. All right. So uh, I'm going to delete all of that. And let's just comment this so you guys can revisit it. So at the end of these uh, four lines of input, we move on to the fifth line, which is going to be uh, y, uh, this thing, uh, an integer y. And the next y line still consists of two different names. So uh, let, once again, let's look at this example. Uh, yeah, so in this case, y is going to be 2, right? Because it's 2 here. So DNF and DNG will have to be separated. And we can identify them by making uh, a list, once again, that functions exactly like the same group list functions, but it's going to be called diff group. So it's going to look a bit like this. And you can see it's in the exact same code, except I've used a different variable here for A and B, just so you can differentiate it. And also it's appending to diff group instead of same group this time. So diff group uh, will have df and dg. So it will look like this. That's already a g. Yeah, diff group will look like this. And we'll go back to, to the c1 and c2 variable later. Let's just look at the next line of input, which is g, which let's go back. G is the last G line, so each consists of three different names, which is the actual list. And we can see we've done the exact same with the real group here. And at this point, I'll assume you guys understand what's going on with these uh, three arrays, with same group, diff group, and real group. So now what we're going to do is we're going to check if same group has anything in common with real group. And what this does is basically we're going to iterate through each element in real group. So actually, I'll just write it down so it's easier for you guys to understand what's going on. ACG, BDF, ACG, BDF. Just do that. So if you guys don't want to watch through this whole uh, step, just use the skip button. Okay, so the array will look like this. Sorry, the list, the diff group list will look like this. And we're going to see if same group, which is this thing, has anything in common with r real group. I'm oh, sorry, this is real group. So we're going to iterate through each element in real group. So i is going to represent ACG in this case. And we're going to iterate through every element in the same group. So I'm just going to make a copy of this down here so you guys can just see it straight here so j if i is going to represent this and then j is going to represent this this and that right so we're going to do r equals all element i for element j so what this does is it it, uh, it basically compares acg to abgl jk bdf to abgl and jk and it checks if there are, if there are any uh, it checks if j is a sub list of i, so uh, that might be a bit difficult to understand. But uh, r is just going to be a boolean in this case. All right, so let, let's look at this. Let's look at it this way. Let's compare ACG to these three. So obviously, 
Um, they are not the same, right? AB is in the sublist of ACG, GL is in the sublist of ACG, JK is in the sublist of uh, ACG. Uh, this is the same with BDF because there's no violations from, uh, from there. But if you look at JK, uh, there's going to be a violation here because uh, J and K are. Uh, wait, uh, sorry guys, I got this wrong. Actually, uh, let's look at the C1 variable, right? C1 represents the total possible constraints that could be violated. And in this case, it's three. And C1 is just going to be set equal to three. And we look at this. And we see that uh, we minus a, vi a vi we're, we're, we start by setting C1 equals X because we assume that the, uh, that the input has violated every, every uh, constraint that's possible. But we minus one every time we see that it hasn't violated the constraint. And we see that it minuses one when J and K is found to be a sublist of J, K, and L, which is done from this all function, which you guys can read up a bit on. So obviously nothing's gonna happen up until it gets to J, K, L, and it sees that J, K is in fact a sublist of J, K, L. And once that happens, uh, this R thing is gonna return true. And if R is true, we remove one violation. So that's it. And that's just one violation in this case. So three minus one is going to be two, right? So let's scroll down. Let's see what happens with diff group. Is it in common with real group? So this is the same exact case, except with diff group, we, we do things a bit differently. We assume that they haven't violated anything. And we see that if they violated anything, just by checking that uh, if there's a sublist of diff group, assume this is diff group. All right, assume this is diff group. We compare and we see that if something that is, isn't meant to be in, so something that isn't meant to be a sublist becomes a sublist, we can tell that they violated the, uh, the constraint because they belong the same list, even when they're supposed to be uh, separated. And diff group already has all the arrays, already has all the groups that contain this, which is DNF and GND. So we start with zero, but anytime we see a violation, we add one to C2. And in this case, there were, there's one violation, right? Where DNF must not be in the same group. So it's compared to real group. And we see that DNF are in the same group. So once again, R will return true. And if R is true, we add one to C2. And C2 is initially set at zero because we assume that they haven't violated anything. But if you look at the other constraint where DNG uh, must must not be in the same group, we see that you know there's no sublists of DNG in any of uh, in any of real group sublists. So DNG is not a sublist of any of real group sublists. That's kind of a mouthful, but uh, hopefully you guys understand. And since DNG is not a sublist, uh, it hasn't violated anything, right? So we don't do anything with R. It's just only if they violated it, we add one. So finally, the total number of violations is going to be C1, which represents the uh, violations for violations from the same group, from the same group. And C2 represents the violations from the different group. And we just, uh, we, we have this value, which represents the total number of violations. And we just print it out. So let's see how this works. So everything here is commented. So it should still work. So let's try this sample input, right? I'm just going to save it first and let's run it. So let's start with three A and B, G and L. Wait, I can read from here actually. So G and K, then it's gonna ask for Y, which is gonna be two. And it's going to be DNF and DNG. And finally, it's going to ask for the real group. And there are four real groups. It's ACG, BD, BD, F, uh, E, H, 
I and J K L. So we print that and it outputs three because there are three violations. Two from the same group and one from a different group and we just uh, print that out in a combined variable called violations. So hopefully you guys understand uh, why this code works and you guys can learn from this. Maybe try your own method or try to replicate uh, this method, which is working. All right. Thank you for watching, everyone. See you next time.